say crime does not pay, but my next guest, New York Times best-selling author S.A. Cosby, may beg to differ with hit crime novels like Blacktop, Wasteland, and Razorblade Tears. The former hardware store manager turned literary rock star in my heart <laughs> has flipped the publishing world on its head with his critically acclaimed and socially conscious page turners. The Washington Post calls him one of the most muscular, distinctive, grab you by both ears voices <laughs> in American crime fiction. <laughs> And if that's not enough, former President Barack Obama in back-to-back -back years has named essays books to his annual summer reading list, including his latest, All the Sinners Bleed. Tam fam, the rock stars in the house. <laughs> Please welcome award-winning author S.A. Cosby. Hi, how are you? I am, I am better because you here, so you go <laughs> Sean. Yeah, that's my what, mama named me Sean. Your mama named you Sean. <laughs> yeah. We can call you Sean. Yeah. But we are calling you a superstar. Oh gosh, that's too much. No, it's not. <laughs> I mean, when you were scripting this out in your head, not the novels, but how this life plays out, is this was this the plan? No, this is way, way more than I thought it would ever be. Really? I just, I just wanted people other than my mama and my brother to like my books. That was, <laughs> that was, that was the high bar I was trying to reach. Just, so this is, this is so surreal. So now you've got millions more, including <laughs> President Barack Obama. That's crazy. That's insane. And back to back. That's even more insane. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a running theme, the word insane, because it's, it's, it's all insane. very crazy. It's insane. Yeah. Um, Take me back to the beginning, because we all have this journey. You grew up in rural Matthews County, yeah. Virginia. Yep. I had to look it up on the map. It's the smallest county in Virginia. <laughs> smallest county in Virginia. <laughs> yeah. Your mom, Joyce, mm -hmm. raised you and your brother mm -hmm. you were alone. Yeah. And you said that there were times when the family, of course, struggled. A single mom, mm -hmm. trying to make it work. But you found power in reading mm -hmm. through family. Yeah, my mom was a big. Everybody in my family, even though we were we were really poor, like I got to say we were dirt floor poor. Like I was like a joke. I remember my first three piece suit. My daddy wore a coat. I wore a vest. And my brother wore the pants. <laughs> but um, <laughs> and so we didn't have a lot of money, but we had so much love in the house. And my everybody in my family were big readers. My mom loved reading historical novels and and biographies. My grandmother read. Uh, romance novels, which I used to sneak away. Those Harlequin yeah, romance, Harle I know. <laughs> and like learn new words like tumescent. And, uh, <laughs> and then my uncles read, uh, my uncles read um, detective novels like uh -huh. John D. McDonald, my, yeah. uh, uh, Mickey Spillane. And my aunt read all Stephen King and Clyde Barker. So it was just, we were surrounded by books, by learning, by reading. And reading became this sort of escape for us from, you know, what is, can be a very... But it drew some eyebrows when you were little because I understand the first <laughs> thing you wrote <laughs> scared people so much they called a therapist? So I wrote this story in sixth grade. It was a werewolf story. It was like a 75 page. I thought it was an epic. Uh -huh. And I, <laughs> I gave it to my teacher and she was like, oh, I'm, I'm kind of concerned. We're going to have you talk to the therapist. And I was like, okay. And he was like, no, no, this is good. This is creative. He, he's fine, relatively speaking. So <laughs> Relatively speaking. Yeah, yeah. That did not deter you. You kept going. And, and I, I want to talk about the books, but this story of being a hardware manager mm -hmm jumping into, you know, <laughs> we all have dreams that mm -hmm. sometimes are dreams deferred. Right. This was right. not the case for you. When you were introduced as the former hardware manager, <laughs> now best-selling author, I, I mean, there are a lot of stops in the middle. Oh, yeah. But what's the short? Give me the cliff notes on how something like that happens. Oh, man, the cliff notes is you just don't give up. You know, yeah. you just... And, <laughs> I just... I just felt like writing was the thing I was supposed to do. Everybody has their thing. My mama used to say, birds gotta sing, bees gotta sting, and you gotta write. Uh -huh. And so that was the thing. I felt like I've got to write. So I just, I got a lot of rejections and just determined. Many were, I counted yeah. they. 63 rejections for my first novel. Yeah, and I, I kept all of them and I printed them up when it got it accepted and I burned them up. So. <laughs> I love it. You burned them all up. Yeah. <laughs> Well, as your mama said, you got to write, and boy, do you write. Coming up, we're going to take you inside Sean's world and talk more about All Sinners Bleed, and he's working with Quest Love on something after the break. Now, Tam Fam, I'm going to get to signing these books. We'll be right back with my inspiration. Personalizing them to our amazing audience and fam. I, 
I'm actually just showing off because my favorite is in the building. <laughs> Did you know I wrote a book? Yes. I'll sign so you one. Please do. Please do. <laughs> the fact that you would even just touch my book oh, would gosh. be an honor because your writing is mesmerizing, it's spellbinding. I just want to read an excerpt from All Sinners Bleed. It's a murder mystery that takes place in a fictionalized uh, county in Virginia, mm -hmm. much like where you grew up. Um, and the story centers around the country's first black sheriff, Titus Crown. What a name. I, when I, I, the minute I saw Titus's name, I was like, I know Titus. I know Titus. As he hunts for a serial killer who's preying on black children. This is what you wrote in the book. Um, waiting for the world to shed tears for your pain was like waiting for a statue to speak. So you filed the reports, you answered the emails, you carried on as best you could. And if you were like Titus, if you wore a badge on your chest, you promised you'd do all you could to find the last wolf and peel off his mask. Show the world the face of the monster. I, everybody needs a Titus. <laughs> <laughs> He's dogged. Yeah. He's challenged. He's underestimated. Yeah. When you were creating this... He's a little uptight, too. He's uptight. <laughs> but you become uptight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you, when you feel like it matters, mm -hmm. Your, your spine stiffens. Yeah. When you were creating Titus, where was that coming from? I had a conversation with a friend of mine who used to be a minister, and he said the reason he left the ministry is because I didn't feel like I was doing what the Bible says I'm supposed to do. And I was like, what is that? He said, I didn't feel like I was looking out for the least of us. Mm. And with Titus, I wanted somebody who looked out for the least of us. Yeah. I wanted a knight errant, so to speak, who would speak for the people who can't speak for themselves. And when I created him, yeah, he is a little uptight. He's very, he's hurt, he's bruised, yeah. he's battered, but like the poem Invicticus, he's unbowed. Mm. And so that's why I wanted to create with him. And I'm just so, I'm overwhelmed that people have uh, connected with the book that we did. Absolutely, you know, when I was writing Jordan's character, and she's named after Michael Jordan and Peyton Manning because it was a late night watching ESPN. I have no idea. Isn't it crazy when you come up with titles and names? I was like, why is her name Jordan Manning? <laughs> so strange. But it was for me because I'd covered crime for so long. And she is inspired by me, but she's way tougher than I was mm -hmm. at her age. She's in the newsroom. Mm -hmm. She's trying to solve this crime. Yeah. But I needed her to deal with some of the pain that was inside of me mm -hmm. because covering crime is not, you don't get to just go home and forget. No that you were in front of an empty lot where in Chicago, Ryan Harris's body was found. And that was a part of what I needed to purge and right. deal with. Right. So her, her character, like Titus, deals with how hard it is to be on the front line of these stories. Mm -hmm. Were you exercising out things that you'd seen and yeah. feelings that you felt? Yeah, I think for me, growing up in the South, growing up in a small town, I love the South, um, but to paraphrase James Baldwin, because I love the South, I reserve the right to criticize it. Mm. And so seeing the things that I saw growing up, seeing the racism, seeing the, the classism, yeah. seeing the misogyny and stuff, those type of things, for me, it's so frustrating because in the real world, very many times those things don't get challenged. They yeah. don't get addressed. So when you write, I can make Titus address those things. Yeah. I can make Titus stand up yes. for those people. You know, I, I can make Titus go, go through some things that I probably would not be tough enough to go through. Right. But he can bear it. He's, I, I said to somebody, he has the broad shoulders to bear the weight. Well, listen, you have the broad shoulders to open eyes of what <laughs> a true prolific writer, a beautiful writer is, because so often, People have a perception in the crime world. I'll tell you, when I sold um, As the Wicked Watch, they said that she was the only black female protagonist written by a black woman solving crime, that the character didn't exist. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, wait a minute, that's, how is that possible? Mm -hmm. So it is an honor. Now, I'm signing all these books for them. <laughs> I'm a, when you get the show, you can beg. <laughs> can you, you please don't sign a copy for oh me? Oh, my God, it'd be my pleasure. And while you're signing, real quick, I know that um, you're collaborating with a mutual friend, Questlove. Yeah. You have a children's book called The Rhythm of Time. That was a great ex Thank you. Oh, for thank you. That. No, thank you. The Rhythm of Time. I never get tired of signing books. <laughs> It keeps my cats in the, in the fine treats they become accustomed to. <laughs> right, I like it, I like it. So that's a great collaboration. Oh, it was wonderful. It was incredible. It was funny, though, because when they first approached me, they're like, hey, um, Questlove would like to talk to you. I'm like, all right, yeah, great. What about it? Don't matter. I'll talk to him. <laughs> and, um, 
Can we talk about like recipes for spaghetti? I don't care. <laughs> um, but they were like, no, we, he wants to collaborate with you. Yeah. He wants you to write a book with him. And I was like, I mean, that's cool and all, but has he read my books? Yeah. You're like, yeah, I need you to read. Don't be a fan. Read. Yeah, people get shot in the face a lot in my books. So, uh, <laughs> and so I don't know if that's conducive for kids' books, but no, he came up with this incredible idea yeah. and these incredible characters, and then I was just blessed to be able to help him bring his vision to life. It was an incredible moment. Wow. I grew up in the 90s, so yeah. being a fan of the roots. Come on. You know, come on, man. Yeah. You know, that's things fall young. apart. That's so, not good. Right. Well, congratulations on everything. It Thank is. You so much. It, I cannot tell you how you've served as an inspiration for me, and I am so oh grateful you accepted the invitation to come on the show. All the Sinners Bleed, available now where books are sold. And guess what? Everybody's going home! <laughs> Thank you, oh, thank God, you so I much. I adore you, I adore you.